I am Dan Heaney, and I'm in Dolores, Colorado, and we have a log furniture shop here called Rustic Style Furniture. We make log furniture out of aspen and ponderosa pine. When I was a kid, I was making uh, walking sticks with my sister, and I always thought it'd be a neat idea to give that a try. And Well, I studied environmental studies in college and was looking for a sustainable job career and this one kind of just fell on my lap as I was, I was making my way through life. Um, what I was looking for was something that could be created within a 50 mile radius of where I live and this fit the bill. So our, our logs come from our national forest which is maybe 20 miles away from us and then my lumber comes from our local lumber, lumber mills which they're also getting the the lumber right here in the Dolores area. So it's fulfilled the, the dream that I had and uh, it's almost making me a living. <laughs> nope. Yes. My wife Colette, we've been together pretty much as long as I've had the business. So she's known me from pretty much the get go of rustic style furniture and uh, She's seen the, the business develop and, and work through its problems and, and make some great products. And this guy, although we do make, try to make sure we're not taking habitat. Within the last five years, I quit my desk job for the county and just figured it was easier. We live in Dolores because it's so beautiful and I was tired of waking up and going and sitting in an office. So. I ended up just, we decided, hey, quit being unhappy where you don't belong and help me out and let's make some furniture. And then we got our website rolling and we were able, I was able to devote more time and I've learned, been learning a ton. Because I'm an artist, I like to work with stained glass and we sometimes were making cabinets and mirrors with glass in it and wood. It's good to combine different genres of art. Kind of use what you have. Through our furniture. I use aspen over the ponderosa pine because it, it it has more character to it, the aspen does. Because it's a little softer, if any kind of, uh, oh, the, the elk will come and chew on it and it'll leave the scarring on the tree. Um, there, there's a beetle that cruises through the bark layer that leaves a gallery on it. and. Uh, it just create it creates a lot more character in the in the aspen. That's why I use the aspen for the log work. But that is the only people that are cutting the aspen up. Everybody else kind of avoids it because there's just not a market for it. So for the most part, our lumber companies are cutting up ponderosa pine, and we get this beautiful blue stain in it that they look out for the furniture companies around the area, so we can use it for dining table tops and bar tops and in our furniture. So. So this is a piece of the elk chew that I was speaking of where the scarring creates this beautiful character in the wood. When we started off, we were making our tenons by hand, but fortunately some smart guy made this tenon device. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so we have a tenon now, and instead of leaving this factory edge on, I will take it off on the bandsaw. And that's how we create our tenon. So this is a puzzle cut king size bed. The puzzle cut uh, name comes from the puzzle cuts that are coming through the ponderous pine. And we try to make, you know, we try to exaggerate, but a lot of times it is what the, the form of the, the, the lumber is. Um, it takes about three days to build a bed like this. From, you know, we're basically doing it from scratch. Um, going out, collecting the wood, and going out to the lumber mills, dealing with them, letting, this, letting the blue stain dry out, 
and uh, putting it together. Let's look at these guys. These guys are kind of cool. So this is our cabinet work. Um, once again, we're, we're bringing together aspen and ponderosa pine. We use uh, full extension door glides, and I use a, a pine product out of Utah for our drawers. And then the drawer bottoms is our aspen tongue and groove, which is uh, produced here locally. What we do is kind of unique, once again, is we're doing our puzzle cut. So I'm, I'm tracing out the lines of the log and working around knots and then making it fit back in there instead of just going with straight lines like that. And even on the sides, we have the puzzle cut. So we have lots of movement in our piece and it just makes it flow nicely. To get our logs, we go out and harvest ourselves. We, we try to get dead standing. What I'm looking for is the, where the tree has already dropped the bark. It just makes it a lot easier for us to work the tree. And the, our diameter size for, for the furniture I try to make is not very big. It might start off at about two inch diameter and goes up to about six inch. So we're not looking for really big trees. And my wife and I have been harvesting the trees for the past couple of years uh, ourselves. And then I've had employees help me and other, other things like that. There's, the aspen have been hit with what's called a sudden aspen decline up there. Have you seen any? Uh, we definitely have there? seen that sudden aspen decline, and uh, my guess is it's caused from the drought. We've had it. We had a two-year drought back in in the early O's, and uh, caused those trees to die off, which was good for me, bad for the trees. But as you're traveling through the the aspen. These clones are all different diversity. So you'll see a really healthy stand with no deaths in it, and then you'll hit another stand where there might be 80% deaths in it. But you're always seeing those little clones coming back up again. You're seeing the sprouts come up, so. Looking at a crystal ball, how do you feel the uh, Aspen and the uh, Ponderosa furniture business is gonna be, say, in the next 20, 30 years? Uh, it seems like it just continues to be a popular form of furniture, and I think it will continue in the future.